Dear brothers and sisters at MPCL Lane, greetings in the Lord. I want to take this time to speak to you as your pastor. It has been on my heart to express the deep longing I have to see you again. I also want to share the great burden I have for your spiritual and physical well-being. In recent days, some have referred to concerns about the transmission and lethality of COVID-19 as a manufactured fear. Some continue to downplay the seriousness of the pandemic, even as friends and prominent figures contract the virus. And those in healthcare tell stories of cases they have treated, real people and real families that suffered from the virus. I'm disappointed that the pandemic has become politicized and that as a society, we have not been able to make decisively stop COVID so that we can recover and return to normalcy. It can be done. Other countries have been successful. Let's not lose hope. In our spiritual community, I take comfort that we are taking personal steps and steps as a church to stop the spread. For those staying inside, I'm sure you have become familiar with every inch of your home. For those working outside the home, the mask and personal protective equipment are uncomfortable, cumbersome, and hot. There is a cause that we bear in order to keep ourselves and others safe. And isolation and the restraint on fellowship is a real cost. I'm speaking as your pastor because I want to appreciate you and encourage you to press on. We asked as a church that formal ministries, classes, groups, and meetings all move online. And they did. You did. We continue to keep our ministries online so that they are accessible to all members. If you have difficulty getting connected or joining, let us know so we can help. But some ministries cannot be adapted so as easily as others. You know my affection for choir and its members. And it is not the same to sing into screens and devices. I understand that. And I feel the exhaustion and screen fatigue. Let us be comforted that this is temporary as we renew our efforts to avoid physically meeting in groups. As your pastor, this is also an opportunity for me to provide some direction for us as a church. Though there are new challenges, social distancing does not need to mean that we are cut off from one another. I want to invite you to participate in the web of personal care that is taking place. Phone calls, text messages, emails. We have the opportunity to reach out on an individual basis to members that we miss to offer a greeting or a prayer. Let it be said that we are a caring community. When there is a condolence or birth notification in the, in the announcements, or when we hear about an illness or read prayer requests, let's make it a habit to reach out in those moments. Given the situation, those small acts are given are even more pronounced and valuable. We would ordinarily do this in person, grieving, celebrating together, and offering prayers. But since we are not meeting, it means we should establish new habits and intentional practices 
to sustain and grow the relationships we have. I also want to acknowledge that while our ministries are not formally meeting in person, there are individuals and members who have begun to meet, sitting in the park, going for a walk. When we are, I hear these stories, I'm gladdened by the initiative that members are taking and the wisdom they are exercising. I appreciate the thoughtfulness that goes into planning a responsible and safe interaction. You have encouraged me by your actions and I want to share that with the church. These are examples of the church being the church and members being present in each other's lives, even though we cannot formally meet. May God be with you. May the love of Christ fill your hearts. And may we experience the Spirit as we care for one another as an act of worship and expression of our membership in Christ's church.